Welcome to our Meet the Experts Cinematography panel. We're joined today by Emmy nominees, Christian Springer from Atlanta, Igor Martinovich from George and Tammy, Anastas and Mikos from Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities, M. David Mullen from The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Sean Porter from The Old Man, and John Joffin from Schmigadoon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on all of your Emmy nominations. And uh, just quickly, what what was it like when you found out uh, you were nominated? Uh, Anastas, earlier you, you said you were on your boat. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, there's a strike going on and uh, a boat is as good as a place as any to be. So it wasn't until I got within cell phone range and uh, a phone blew up. So it's um, it's a real honor to be counted among these amazing, amazing cinematographers. Yeah, I'm just in awe of, in awe of everybody here. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian, how about you? Um, I have a young uh, child running around rampant in my house right now. So I had completely forgotten that nominations were coming out and, and uh, was totally surprised by it. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was super, super fun uh, way to start the day. And, and uh, yeah, huge, huge honor to be amongst all these incredible TPs. Uh, Igor, how about you? Uh, yeah, I was uh, actually on a set uh, in Mexico in the desert, so my phone just got buzzing and, uh, you know, I was kind of focusing what was in front of me, but uh, it was great to 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 receive the call and uh, it's great to be part of, you know, this amazing group of cinematographers. Uh, Sean? It's a privilege. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a shock. I live in Oregon, so I kind of escaped. LA and all of that stuff when I'm not working so I, I of course was not tuned in or had any idea what was going on and yeah agent sent some cryptic message at you know yeah like eight in the morning it was great <laughs> <laughs> cryptic I like that uh David yeah it was uh, a bit of a surprise uh you know the, I, I've been nominated every season so I didn't expect to get a nomination for the fifth season but um I was very 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 happy to to get it uh, my wife told me i remember it was the nominations coming out that morning but i was busy online doing something else or and then suddenly i get a text from my wife who's in the next room saying here's the nominations and, you know so uh, yeah was, you've won five for five yeah like you know not not many people can say that for the whole series so <laughs> it, was, uh, it was not quite an honor yeah uh john um, I, well, I had a call from my agent, which was quite a surprise, given that we're in the middle of a strike and there's not much work happening. So it was nice to hear from him. And yeah, like what a what a pleasant surprise. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm just honored to be nominated. Amongst all, and I've seen all of the shows. I've seen everyone's work. It's just beautiful. So uh, it means a lot. And uh, yeah, to be considered amongst everyone else, just, it's just amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I'm, I'm curious how you guys kind of start uh, on, on a project or just like an, an episode even, but like when you first read a script, like how quickly uh, do you picture in your mind how you're going to shoot a scene or approach a scene or like start a shot list or does it kind of vary from script to script? Um, Igor, let's start with you. Um, I mean, I think it's a process of discovery. It's uh, you. It's really about like trying to understand the the, the narrative, what is going on, whose perspectives are we presenting. Uh, um, you know, trying to find the 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 look together with the director and trying to find the uh, the, the approach, overall approach, developing a concept. Uh, it takes time. It really takes time, and it takes like uh, lots of conversations, lots of exchange of images. Uh, uh, John Hillcott had like over 3,000 images as references that I had to come through and figure out what do I can relate to. So it was a, it was a long process, but it's a, it's a beautiful process. I love being in, in pre-production. Pre it's amazing. Mm -hmm. My favorite part. Yeah. Uh, Anasis, how about you? Um, for me, I think it depends if I've worked with a director or not before, because when you work with a director, you have a shorthand. And that shorthand really cuts through the process very quickly because uh, we all know, we tend to know what we're not into, you know, um, because we've done that part and we know what those proclivities are. Um, but it, like everybody, it, it's all about reading the script and what are the first images in my head. Most of the time, I just read for story. I mean, when I first get a script, I just read pure narrative. I mean, just, you know, it's, it's, 
until you see for myself, until I see the actual locations and the sets and all of that, it it literally to some degree lives in this nebulous ND background of, of other films that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, David, how about you? Well, if it's a project I haven't done before, it's a new project. I mean, it's inevitable that you imagine things as you read the script. I try very hard almost to not visualize the script because um, you don't, you know, you want to talk to the director and and get to the end of the script at least, but you want to talk to the director and get a sense of their vision first before you're too far on the wrong track. So uh, I try not to lock in anything too early, but I often, when trying to talk to the director about the look, I, I play games of what I call visual contrasts, like, you know, do we lean wide angle telephoto, saturated, desaturated, warm, cold, it just, and often it's tied to the narrative. Is this is this narrative a arc from A to B? So if it ends here, does it have to start at the other direction? Or is it a world building story where there's a contrast between A and B or A, B and C? So you're building a world for a character A and a world for character B and you're intercutting that. So that's all based on the structure of the script. Um, but in terms of Maisel, since this is the fifth season and you know, I've worked many times with Amy. Uh, it's more imagining what she's going to ask for as I'm reading it. You know, when are the big wonder sequences going to show up? Um, you know, and if it's on a set, we often shoot like the apartment set. I don't sweat it so much, but if it's a new set or a new location or or something like that, then I start looking at scouting from a, a 360 degree point of view, like what if I have to start outside the street and go through the door and go up the stairs and do 360, you know, how am I going to do that before just as to have that in my pocket. That's, that's like the subway scene in, in the, the season. You're just coming in and out of cars and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, John, how about you? Because the, before you were talking about like how you were so inspired after meeting Cinco for Schmigadoon. Yeah. Yeah, well, I I think what I love about, uh, I love pre-production too, and what I love about the process is hearing everyone's ideas. I mean, obviously, when I read a script, I have some sort of big ideas or, you know, like large ideas of, of generally how I think I could take the script. But then you go, and I love to go to all the meetings, like I love to go to the props meetings, I love to go to the costume meetings, because someone will say one thing that you can feed off of. And it's just so, it's so nice to feed off of everyone's ideas. And I think that's what I love so much about filmmaking. You've just got so many people putting their heads together and coming up with ideas. And then, and then I find too, once you, once you get to set and you see what actors do, you change even more, but you, you have sort of a general plan, but um yeah, I like to I, I like to have a plan, but I like to feel how things play out on set. And I find uh, a lot of times things happen naturally or there's uh, things you just see on the moment. But definitely going in with a strong plan is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Christian, how about you? Yeah, I think, you know, I think David said it best that, you know, it sort of depends on <clears throat> if it's a new project or if, it's, if you're returning to the project, you know, this was our fourth season and, and we knew that we wanted to kind of approach it a little different. And so, you know, reading, reading the script, you know, we were all trying to think outside of the box and come up with some um, new ideas that we could sort of um, throw into the pod. And, and uh, you know, the director and I, we sort of, break scripts down independently. And then we try to also then do like a fresh session where we break scripts down together and, and bring, you know, some ideas, some, you know, shots that we've seen or sequences that we maybe thought up while, while reading it our first time. And, and then it's it's a good, very organic, natural process. Um, uh, But yeah, I think sometimes, you know, when you have a new script, uh, it's, for me, it's different each time. It, It depends on the way the script is written and, and the voice the script is written in and, and how descriptive it is or how much I, you know, my mind wanders while I'm reading it versus how, you know, uh, engaged I am. And uh, it's it's different each time. Mm-hmm. And Sean, how about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, echoing others here, I think to an extent, you're, it's a practice of trying to uh, repress <laughs> any ideas you have right away because you don't want this <laughs> to get in the way later on. Uh, and like David was saying, I, I like playing games with the directors too. Kind of, is, is it this or that all the time? Uh, just to kind of 
construct the edges of the swimming pool or the playground that we're all going to get into. So I kind of know, okay, I'm not going to go past this boundary. We sort of established that at least, you know, like let's start working on some of the other edges that are going to define the shape of this thing. And as Igor says, I think it's a, it is a long, I don't think I'm done prepping until like we're working on the last shot. You know, I think that you're discovering this show or these, whatever we're working on um, all the way through the process. And sometimes you don't know, you know, even in those comparisons, looking at films only gets you so far or photography. A lot of times it's on the day, I'll look over to John and be like, oh, is this too dark? Do we cross a line? Are we going to get a call tomorrow? And it's like, no, go for it. So like, okay, here's a new boundary. And that defines, that shifts everything that came before it and everything that came after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, finally, um, present company excluded. Have you watched something recently where you were just incredibly impressed or wowed by a shot or a scene? Uh, John, let's we'll start with you. I know you've watched everyone here, but can't name anyone yeah. here. <laughs> oh, because I, I, I actually was going to uh, name David from Marcos Mrs. Maisel because <laughs> that show constantly blows me away. And uh, that last, I mean, I'm amazed I, and I'm going to talk about him. I don't care that he's here. <laughs> It's amazing that he can do such beautiful lighting yet move the camera so freely and so appropriately. I mean, that just, um, yeah, it really speaks to me, that show, and I'm constantly, and it's just, I, I get a lot of joy from watching that. So mm -hmm. okay. um, that's the one. Christian, are you going to break the rules too, or or no? <laughs> I'm, a rule not break the, I'm not a rule breaker. Come on, Christian. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there's a show called The Old Man that I'm very fond of. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, you know, in our in our strike downtime, I've been getting some really uh, good uh, catch up time with Criterion, and um, I just watched Chunking Express and Showgirls in the same <laughs> sitting, and uh, I encourage everyone. Both of the Criterion remasters of both of those movies are truly stunning really beautiful um and and also such like cultural staples of of that period of time in cinema that are really really fascinating to like revisit now you know 20 30 years later it's, it's cool um igor again um i'm trying to think i mean i saw some really interesting documentaries that were that were done uh, uh incredibly uh um and um, the one is uh, um, uh, Mexican uh, uh, filmmaker Tatiana uh, Cueza and uh, her and her partner are making these like uh, documentaries that are, that are done in a way that you don't know if you're watching documentary or a fiction film. Yeah. And because the, 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 the lighting is incredible, the framing is impeccable and uh, it's uh, it's just like I, I was just moved by how how this is recreated and done. I don't know exactly what they've done, but um, it was it was really impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, Anastas, what about you? Oh, um, I went to see Oppenheimer in mm -hmm. on a large screen with probably five hundred other people, and it just brought back the love of cinema. And in the hands of a master between Hoyt and Chris, I mean, it's just masterful storytelling all the way through three hours sitting and we all got because uh, it's great to actually hear, share that commonality of storytelling and, and be part of an audience and have everybody's heart thump the same way at the same time in the same room. So, yeah, Oppenheimer, uh, two thumbs up. Yes, definitely. it was a quick three hours, too, which it's not. Oh, usually. absolutely. <laughs> no, it's it goes no, it's a it's a masterful bit of pacing mm -hmm. and storytelling. Masterful. Definitely. Um, Sean, how about you? Uh I was gonna call out uh Mr. David Klein. Uh we were kind of partners in crime uh last year for uh skeleton crew for it's kind of a Star Wars spinoff. And and that I had done some volume work previously, but really cut my teeth, you know, spending a year on one of those stages and uh, and just now it's kind of getting through the last um, few episodes of the season three of Mandalorian. And I think he has such a, I mean, it's it's like everything. It's a new tool in the toolbox and there's there's pluses and minuses and there's times to use it and not. And uh, and he has been working with it really since its inception. And, and it's just masterful work. It's 
it's really inspiring and knowing how hard it actually is to do. I love that people think it's like cheap and easy. It's anything but, uh, but yeah, it's really, really cool stuff in there. And David, what about you? Well, in terms of it, I just recently watched uh, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, which is a 1960s oh. movie that Ozzy Morris shot. And uh, I hadn't seen it in decades. I forgot how how grim and sad that film was, but it's it's a great piece of filmmaking and black and white cinematography. And then just I stumbled across a very little indie film on, I think it was like Freebie or something called The Color Room. It's just a period film about uh, a true story about a woman potter in uh, England in the 1930s and Denson Baker from Australia shot it. And it's just gorgeous period lighting. Uh, every time she went into the uh, the color room, which is the room where they keep all the colored jars of chemicals for, for pottery work, he did this beautiful colored flaring from the windows and the, and the pots in the room. And it's so subtle. Uh, I couldn't figure out quite how he did it. I actually had to email him and talk to him about oh it. But it's, it's a very beautiful beautiful little uh period film that's awesome I mean that's gotta be like the biggest compliment when you get you know yeah. like someone is, is interested in your work and wants to know how you did it so um well we unfortunately have to wrap but congratulations again on all of your shows and your nominations and it's great speaking with all of you and have a great day thank you thank you for thank having you so much very much